is Nisha. So today I wanted to do my March favourites. I haven't done favourites videos for a long time but this month I really have quite a few. You know I've been complaining for a while that my skin felt a bit dry. I had this really dry area under my eye that was emphasising my fine lines. So I was trying to do everything I can to rectify it. You know I use the eye patches from Skin Iceland, the micro needle ones, and you might remember I bought these ones as well to try. These are the Hydro Cool, cool Firming Eye Gels. So the micro needle ones I use at night because you have to wear them for at least two hours. These ones are like a 10 minute solution, so I would use these in the morning. Uh, you get eight pairs in this bag. This is my last pair. I used it this morning. So what I do, I actually put like an eye serum. I use the Color Science um, Total Eye or I can't remember what it's called, eye serum. Something that is not a cream but fine serum and then I apply the patches under my eyes. That let the serum also sink in because you sort of block it with the patches so it doesn't evaporate and this is just 10 minutes before I do my makeup and it really really helps to plump up and refresh and moisturize that under eye area so I've been really loving them I've already bought another pack so these are definitely really good the next thing is something that I've had in my stash for ages and you might remember when I did a video on derma planning you know shaving my face I use this in that routine this is the Mario Badesco facial spray with aloe herbs and rose water this is such a lovely spray let me tell you quickly what they say about it this is the Mario Badesco favorite dewy skin mist infused with rejuvenating rose and clarifying thyme it is multiple purpose face hydrating mist with rose water, aloe vera, reviving dehydrated skin with a healthy dewy glow and revealing radiant, re-energized skin formulated with clarifying thyme extract to boost skin clarity. So this is what I've been using every night and every morning straight after cleansing to give my skin that drink of water this doesn't have any alcohol in it so it's not like a setting spray you could put it over your makeup you know if you your makeup is looking a bit too dry and too powdery you could spray that over it but don't feel that this will set your makeup it will revive it it will make it a bit more glowy but it's not going to make your makeup last longer so i do this as a first step spray it on my face, let it sink in, I even pat it in. That will also then help your skin absorb the next ingredient like your serum and your face creams. And this has been working out so lovely for me. So, and it's so inexpensive. I think you can buy it between five and six pounds. This is 118 ml. I think this is the bigger one because they do a smaller one as well. I can't remember if it's 90 ml. 80 mil something like that so always check um, what size you get in but this one is 118 mil which is for flu four fluid ounces really inexpensive solution to hydrate in your skin this really surprised me this is the super goop mineral matte screen spf 30. i've heard a lot of things about super goop this is so white Sorry, this <laughs> tube is so white you can't see it. Can you see it? Supergoop Mineral Matte Screen SPF 30 and this is 100% mineral sunscreen, so not chemical. I've started using sunscreen on my face. Um, in fact, I think, you know, I've told you I don't use really sunscreen in the winter. I'm not out a lot and it's not very sunny but we know that UV and UV, UVA and UVB rays still get to you through the clouds so you should use it 
all year round but I'm just lazy so I haven't been using it in the winter and I thought well the spring is coming I better get a good sunscreen and I thought well I tried this well I didn't realize that this is actually a primer as well you know I don't use primers really I've never seen them making any difference to my foundation till I've tried this so I have I would say normal to combination skin I just get um, oily t-zone and most foundations after six hours start getting quite shiny on my forehead on my chin and around here quite shiny some more than others but this stops my foundations doing that and um, I don't know if this is strong enough for very oily skin but it works for me so uh, let me just read you what they say about it uh, this is a makeup gripping primer that blurs the appearance of pores uneven texture and fine lines leaving behind a soft focus matte finish and it's true um, it's quite it's got sort of slightly beigey color but when you put it on your face it looks quite white it fell, feels very very velvety so velvety so soft and does mattify and because it's a mineral screen you get sort of that lighter cast I would say but the makeup goes on it so lovely it doesn't seem to interfere with my makeup doesn't ball up or anything like that the makeup goes on really lovely and I've noticed that my foundations were not getting as oily maybe tiny bit but nothing um, if I don't use this so I am really really ha happy with that I, I think this is 45 mil and because it's a sunscreen you have to apply quite a lot it's not like a normal primer that you just apply a bit if you're treating it as a sunscreen which it is you have to apply a lot and I do so the only thing is that might not last for a very long time and it is not cheap so what am I might do I might only use it as my sunscreen and the foundation when I need my foundation to look good for a long period of time other than that I might just use any other face sunscreen but it is definitely very very good I think they do glowy one as well I can't remember what this it might be called glow screen if you want instead of mattifying your face you want it more glowy they do that version as well okay foundations so I have tried a few foundations lately and I have the two favorites the new MAC Studio Fix Everywhere and the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation I did review this foundation I thought it was amazing the color was too light so since then I've, I had NC30 I then bought NC38 which is much better match for me the same with the hourglass I think the first one I bought was number six it was very light so then I got eight I'm wearing this one today because I've already reviewed this one I I didn't review this one as such but I did a video uh, trying new makeup and that's where I used it now if you have very dry skin I probably wouldn't go for this one this one is one of those that doesn't make make me shiny after a few hours this is definitely not for very dry skin so if you want to use this one I would moisturize really well underneath but this stayed on really nicely made my skin look flawless I really really like this foundation but if again if you have very dry skin this one is much better option this foundation is also beautiful it gives you it does give you that soft glow really good coverage stays on all day looks really good I really really like this one so I think the choice is your skin type if you dry go for the hourglass if you're normal or, or oily I would try 
the Mac, but they both they're both very different, but I like them both. And yes, the Delilah Alibi foundation is still my very favorite, but these two are very, very close behind it. As we're talking about foundation, look at this. I bought this, the, well, I bought a few. These are called marshmallow sponges because they look like marshmallow. So gorgeous. I don't want to use them because they are so beautiful. And as soon as you use it with foundation, it goes horrible and dirty. These ones are from Coco Cosmetics. Amazing. You know, not every sponge, makeup sponge is the same. It's all about how porous it is or how densely uh, packed it is, how it does it absorb too much product when you apply it, does it spread the product nicely. So they are not all the same. This is wonderful. I feel like when you squeeze the water out of this one, it's not as wet. With other sponges, just squeezing it is not enough. I have to then squeeze it in between two sheets of like kitchen towel, some paper to make it really damp because you never want your sponge to wet. But this one seems to be just fine just by squeezing it with your hand. So here it is dry, here it is wet. <laughs> it's enormous. And it applies your makeup really lovely. It doesn't soak up too much product and you do it in such a quick time because it's so big. The only thing is you can't really use it under your eyes. They do mini marshmallow, but it is the same shape, so it's not really good for under eyes. You might want to use it for like the smaller areas around your nose or, or on your chin, but it's not good under your eyes. They also do the traditional shape of sponge which I have as well and it's lovely and I use that under my eyes but these are amazing the only thing is I wash my sponges in a washing machine so when I do my towels I throw the sponges with it and I should have brought the one that I'm using right now after wash it's lost that beautiful pink color it's sort of gone like a pale grayish blue so I might just keep one so clean that I never use so I can look at it because it is gorgeous. Talking about dry under eyes, I pulled out my Lancome Tent Idol Ultra Wear Concealer. Mine is in 03, I think. Yeah, 03. I remember when I did a video about favorite concealers for mature eyes, this one was one of them. This one is almost like a serum. It's very moisturizing, doesn't exaggerate your fine lines and it make, makes my under eye look much better. So I use this with the Delilah Translucent Powder and this combination seemed to be really, really good. My under eyes are looking much better than they've been looking for a while. Have a look under my eyes. Because um, I love, I've told you before, you know, I love this like really smooth mask-like canvas to have on my face. And yes, for the video, it's, it's fine. I can use any heavy concealer, pack it on, and on a video from a distance, it will look fine. But in real life, can look like a disaster, like a Sahara desert under there. So these two together, give me less of a Sahara look under my eyes. Nads wax strips for my brows. So I have really thin brows, you know, I have to draw them and they are just a nightmare. So they don't grow like very thick hair that I have to wax off really properly. But you know, you get this really fine peach fuzz, baby hair growing underneath and above. And they are quite invisible, but when you are trying to use pencil and that area is not smooth, it really, really shows up. It makes the pencil slide about and you can't get precise shape. And I do my own waxing. So I use, you know, I have got proper wax heater with um, hot wax. But if I want to just 
do my eyebrows I don't want to get that whole pot heated just to do you know these bits of my brows so I bought these and these are amazing you get in here also post calming wax oil wipe and you get powder because you need to powder before to absorb any it comes with instructions anyway and these look just like that so the good thing is about that that little rectangle that you can see can you see it's sort of yellow that's the wax and the good thing about it is you can cut this to any shape you want so if you want to do it under here you can cut it to that shape you can make it smaller thinner wider that's what I like about it there is no need to rub it between your palms to warm it up you just cut it peel it stick it and wax off remember to wax against the hair growth really really love those quick i don't know what i've never bought them before strongly recommend those obviously if you've never done it please test it first somewhere um, because you know some people react to things like that badly especially if you've never waxed your brows and also be very careful if you are using uh, retin-a or tretinoin uh, because that makes your skin a bit thinner while you're using it and it can really irritate your brows I'm absolutely fine with it love them and I can't believe I've never used them before Charlotte Tilbury cream blushes those blushes ones recently she came out with the matte ones and I've got the glowgasm which is not a new thing this one is the one with the shimmer i've got it on today so i'm not into matte blushes but i like to mix these two but also these are so good that you can use them on the top of the powder i am now good with all this cream bronzer cream blusher then you have to powder it then you have to because when you powder it it sort of disappears so then you have to put powder bronzer and blush on the top of it anyway I use this on the top of my blush any blush that I've used so let me swatch them for you you know how you use them you just open it squeeze it a bit comes out always close it afterwards sorry this is called pillow talk pink pop So it's, um, I would say it's like a peachy pink. And then the Glowgasm, and then Glowgasm in Pinkgasm. This one is absolutely beautiful. So this one has a sheen to it. It looks a bit um, similar, that color to NARS Orgasm. I like to mix these two or like today I already had um, my powder blush on and I just pop two little dots and very gently blend them with with a sponge and I get that lovely shine to it and a bit more intense blush so they are really good because they don't interfere with powder you know normally you know that you apply cream on cream powder on powder you're not supposed to apply cream products on the top of powder but these really work obviously if you were going to rub it with a brush or something it wouldn't work that well but if you just gently blend it out with a sponge it works perfectly and stays on all day love those these three lipsticks you might have noticed that um, in the last month i started wearing brighter lipsticks and these three are my favorite they are from charlotte tilbury so on my lips today i have the electric poppy electric poppy then i have the coachella coral which is called bright coral or something now these are really old i've had them forever uh, but i only tend to use them in a warmer weather never really use them in a winter 
this is the coral one still very bright but more coral and velvet underground which is a very deep but still bright fuchsia so this is the velvet underground the coral whatever it is called now i will put it um, in the links and electric poppy really love them they are quite nice to mix as well i sometimes will put the velvet underground and then my put the coral one on the top of it it changes the color slightly but yes i really really love these lipsticks oh forgot to tell you about this so remember i got this um, travel switch from sigma this is like a silicone mat to clean your brushes off between you dipping in different eyeshadows this is really really good it saves me on washing brushes so much more because sometimes i just say i use three different types of browns i will start with the lightest then i will take it off on this mat dip it in another one as long as they are not totally different colors like bright green and i don't know purple then i think it works so so well before every time i've used one brush that's it i would have to wash it so this is really really good and the last thing is my big mistake remember when i bought this eau de janeiro bam bam body scrap i meant to buy the cream but i clicked obviously on the wrong thing and i've ordered the scrap but i'm really glad because i love it first of all it smells amazing i like most of their stuff but i also love the consistency of it you know most of these scrubs in pots have a lot of oil and you have to sort of mix it and then when you put it on your body it all slides off this is still you can tell that it has something slippery and oily in there but it's not swimming in it so it's to me it's much easier to apply i wet my body under the shower then step out of the shower not out out but so i'm not under the water and then i pick a big glob press it onto my arm or whatever i'm scrubbing and start scrubbing works so good um i really really love it so i'm glad i made this mistake and it does a really good job exfoliating i don't have any eyeshadow palettes to show you well i have plenty to show you <laughs> but i don't have a favorite to me it's so difficult to choose a favorite you know i have lots of them and i just love eyeshadow full stop yes if i ever find something that performs amazingly but you already know about those ones and also i've have i've got all these new sigma on a go palette so i've been playing with these so i haven't really been using just the same eyeshadow palette every day today i have um pat mcgrath on the rose the original rose mothership can't remember the name of it so these were my march favorites let me know if you've got any of these products that i've shown you today or let me know what your favorite has been last month but that's all from me thank you so much for watching and stay fabulous bye